for the weekend? Have you settled in on your arms? Yeah, we're going to go with uh, we're going to go with Bolden tomorrow. He threw fifty some pitches, I think, Sunday, and then we're going to go right back with the rotation that we did on the weekend. Russell. Coach, I was going to ask about Christian Franklin, um, him coming up clutch on Monday night. Was How much of that is the hard work he puts in every day, and how much maybe is that a mental approach, you know, to stay with it, to stay in it? Yeah, I think, you know, he had a rough first game. Really, the, the second ball game, you know, leading up to your question, he hit some balls extremely hard. I think he flew out, and maybe it was his last at bat on opening night. He flew out about 405 foot away from you know, he thought he had a home run when he left the bat. He hits an anywhere but dead center at that ballpark. You can't hardly hit it out of there in center. So he – and he lined out to left, and he hit some balls hard. But, you know, he didn't let it get to him. Uh, obviously, I'm sure it bothers him. I mean, everybody wants to have nice stats and try to impress every day. But he uh, – he's pretty strong mentally. Um, and he got he got the big hit for us there that tied it up and ended up scoring. He's getting us the lead and – we never let it up, but uh, he's a he's a hardworking kid that he's always he's one of the last to leave every day, if not the last. And he stays and does extra work. And I think he's kind of got this routine he's in. I think it makes him feel good about everything he's doing that he's putting in his best effort his last year here. Tom. Well, hey, Dave, um, I don't think we had talked to you before we talked to Caleb the other night and he said he developed a slider basically over the course of one week so how has that helped him what like his repertoire and what has the slider done for him yeah he he what he did is he just developed a better slider um, he had a slider but it wasn't he wasn't moving like that he changed his grip started experimenting with some things and you know, obviously it worked and there's a lot of stories like that out there pictures will tell you you know they've pick somebody's brain or, you know, ask somebody how they're holding their slider or their change up or whatever. And it's been career changing for some guys, big leaguers. It's uh, so it's obviously good for us and good for him that, that he has confidence in that pitch and he's found something that uh, can make him stand out. Much. Yeah, Dave, you'd said that you had thought about starting Nolan and Wicklander this week. And what kind of role do you envision them having uh, against Simo? Uh, same role out of the pen. Uh, obviously, that's all there is right now because we named our four starters out of the pen. And then also the, the pitch counts for 70 to 75 last week. Do you expect to extend that for your starters this week again? Yeah, just a little bit. But then again, it's uh, it depends on if it's a, a tough 75 or they're out of the windup a lot. And if there's a lot of tough or an inning where they throw 30 pitches, and then they have some quick ones. It could get them out quicker because you just, you know, if they're a lot of 15 to 20 pitch innings, a few of those, you know, that's easier to send them back out there. Just uh, we'll really keep an eye on that second week. Matt. Hey, what is Matt Goodhart's status uh, for the weekend? And then uh, if he can play, uh, based on the other night, it sounded like you, you plan on maybe doing some different things with your fielders this week. Yeah, he uh, he was cleared to play, um, so we'll we'll see how it goes at, at our workout today. And uh, I'm not sure I'm going to start him tomorrow, but he'll definitely if he's if he's good to go, he'll he'll be in the lineup a couple couple times at least this weekend. And you know, obviously, uh, it, it would probably move around some people. It's uh, whether I take an outfielder out or take a third baseman out and move somebody over. Uh, that's kind of the way it's looked so far. Play. Coach, we're um, we're writing about how good your team is now. What's the danger from your perspective of uh, I guess borrow Nick Saban line of taking the rat poison and reading what we write and staying grounded? I guess is the question, yeah. Coach. Well, you know, I didn't even know until yesterday afternoon late where we were ranked by one poll and. I won't even talk about it with the team today as far as where we're ranked because it's too it's too early to, to know who's where. I mean, there's some really good teams across the country. And 
you know, Texas takes as good as any team we played down there and they didn't win a game. So I don't get all caught up in it right now. Uh, you know, probably just mention it again, just really in, in almost passing way that these teams are going to see all this and they're going to give us a little extra fight. So we just need to, like you said, we need to stay grounded and just play. Really liked what I saw from our team and in the dugout this weekend, no panic down in, in a couple of games. And, uh, and then you take it a step farther. You know, you look at Monday night, sixth inning, we're down, man, there was guys getting after it in the dugout about not, letting this game go. We need to win this game. And, you know, they could have rolled over and said, hey, we're two. No, it's been a good trip. Uh, if we win, we win. We don't, we don't. But I didn't see that at all. So that was a really good sign for me. Thanks. Nate? Yeah, just what do you know about SEMO after their series of South Alabama? Well, I know that they're a little bit older. The lefty we're going to see tomorrow is uh, he's got good stuff, 90 to 94 older kid and you know he held South Alabama down who's one of the projected teams to win their division or league so uh, you know I know we're going to have our hands full I know that I know coach serves real well Andy played for me he was a senior in Nebraska my first year there and uh, you know he's coached at A&M he's coached at Kansas State and uh, you know he's got some good players good recruiter works hard and um, you know I don't think he would have added another game with us if he didn't feel like they could come down there and compete and had a chance to win. So, uh, you know, our focus really is for us to continue to get better. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we're going to try to win every game. I am going to mix it up a little bit here and there, but, you know, next week we don't have a midweek game, unfortunately. That was one of the – one we just kind of lost, to be honest. I think, the, you know, because of Nebraska, we had to shift around some things. But – uh, so we don't play after this weekend for a full week uh, unless we can find a game. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to use some people, but bottom line, we're going to try to get better and hopefully win, win them all. Phil. Hey, Dave. Um, I know with SEMO coming in, uh, Trevor Ezell is a, an assistant coach for them, um, helping out the hitters. And I kind of thought I might have seen a bit of re like a resemblance in between he and Cullen Smith. Um, in maybe a little bit of the way they play, the fact that um, I don't know how much first base Cullen played before this season. He looked pretty good for you this past weekend. That was the same with Ezel. I don't think he played much first base before he played for you, and he was great over there. Do you see some of that similarity between those two guys? Yeah, I see a little bit for sure, and it's probably too early to judge that. But, you know, uh, you're talking about Cullen Smith, who played third base as a freshman in college. And then the next two years he started at second base and then we got him uh, first time playing first to play as far as in, in division one baseball game. Uh, he's still got a ways to go. You know, he's going to, you know, footwork and little things on, on tricky plays, you know, if they make good throws, not a big deal, you know, but if it falls off here or there, you got to move your feet left and right and not get locked in the middle of the base. You got to be able to slide from side to side and even change feet to, expand yourself and, and uh but but definitely uh plays hard like trevor and he's intense in the dugout i'm almost to the point where i said tell you hey calm down a little bit we're gonna be all right but i love it you know the guy wants to win and this is his only year here like trevor to be the year that he gets to play and he wants to make the most of it and uh uh but definitely the the same the same i'd say mindset you know when they they attack the game bob Hey, David, I had a couple here. Um, I guess is the relationship between the coaching staffs, is, I mean, it's the, uh, is that why this series is, is, was scheduled? It, it probably helped. You know, we, uh, we needed, you know, we needed an extra game and we got that. I, I don't know, I can't remember exactly when we scheduled this series, but uh, I think it was maybe last fall because uh, someone out of California was supposed to come in here and they were worried about being able to get out of, out of state. And I think it was Cal Northridge and, uh, and Andy lost a, a series to somebody. So it worked out for us. We both had the same weekend looking for, for a team. And, uh, you know, and then we added the, the fourth game, I don't know, a month ago or so. And, uh, you know, it's, I'd say it definitely helped. It made it easier for sure. 
And then this is going to be your your first home game, you know, since you lost a lot of them last year because of the pandemic. I don't know. Is there any extra excitement or emotion or anything to get back on the field here at home in front of your, you know, what would probably be a de decent sized crowd, I guess. I think the crowd will be as big as it can be. I think for whatever the max they're going to let in, I think that many people are going to show up. I mean, our fans are amazing. I mean, you look at how many people showed up in, in Arlington and a lot of those faces I recognize that live around here or in this state. So they traveled. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of excitement to play our first game here at Baumwalker Stadium. The, the new expansion is going on. Obviously, it's not complete. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times we've already got the first game, so to speak, jitters out of the way. And, and you know, but so Southeast Missouri State, they've already been on the road. So it's not going to be like they're going to be all stressed out coming in here. Uh, but, yeah, definitely opening day is always special. And it looks like the weather's going to be okay. Uh, got a little spoiled yesterday with that. 70 plus degree weather and today's been a little bit more down to normal and then tomorrow things will be mid 50s so hey we're just glad we're home get to play home for a while jason coach what makes semo tough i mean they've always played you guys tough and and it's uh it's always been a good series it's kind of been even um, when you've played them yeah they i just think they have they they do a good job recruiting they play in a good league and they play a good non-conference schedule so I don't feel like that they're intimidated. You know, some schools might come in that are mid-majors that are a little nervous. Uh, I don't sense this when, they, when they're when they on the field with this. And we're going to have to play really good baseball to win, win games. And if we do, we'll win some games. If we don't, we'll get beat. So, uh, you know, it's credit to their coaching staff and their, in the mindset that they've, they've instilled in these kids. Phil. Phil. Jackson Wiggins had a really impressive debut. And I, I know you've said that, you know, you envision him eventually as a starter, potentially even this year. How do you think you might use him this weekend? Do you think he could go multiple innings at, or multiple games? Well, I would say probably there's a either or or both. I mean, um, if we needed to bring him in in the ninth tomorrow to finish the game and then again on Saturday, we'd probably do that or Sunday for sure. If we threw him two innings tomorrow, we could probably throw him two or three or four. Uh, he's He's been stretched out. We just pulled him out of the game because our thinking was, is, uh, yeah, it's a tight game. We've got some good arms that need to go in there. Uh, whatever he did the next inning wasn't going to – he couldn't top it. Let's just get him out of there with a really good taste in his mouth and a lot of confidence. And uh, But, yeah, he had plenty of pitches left out there uh, that he could have gone back out for an inning or two more. So, uh, yeah. Very, very talented. I see him as a little bit of everything right now for us as far as his role. Um, but he'll start here one day, whether it's this year or next. Uh, but he's, uh, he's definitely one of our guys. Much. Yeah, Dave, I was going to ask you about a couple of guys we saw last year's freshmen, uh, Blake Adams, uh, Will McIntyre, and Zach Morris. Uh, what have you seen from those guys, and do and you see them contributing this year as well? Yep, I do. Uh, you know, Adams is throwing the ball pretty good. He's, he's actually got a slider that's better than, than he's had. He's always had a good curveball. It's a little slower. Uh, velocity's up. Uh, I think in a normal year, he, you'd see him more. We just have guys that are back, and he's going to move into a role. Uh, you know, uh, he's a guy that we thought about starting maybe in this series. He could come a long relief for us this year. Uh, who are the other guys you ask about? Uh, McIntyre and Morris. Yeah. I mean, Morris, we, we talked about him. We didn't throw him this weekend. We thought about it a couple of times. Um, you know, he's a guy that, you know, he could be a starter. But uh, we see him more as a, you know, an inning eater in the middle. Maybe come and get a big left-handed hitter out, go back out after that and just let him go. Uh, you know, McIntyre uh, hasn't gotten off to a great start here, hadn't had a great fall, didn't have a great spring, obviously. And, uh, you know, there's we didn't have him on the trip. So, you know, it's it's a tough deal. We got got guys that are ahead of him right now. We think he's got got good stuff. But, um, you know, hopefully hopefully it'll come out here in the future. Clay. Clay. Coach, uh, Slavin's uh, obviously had had a big weekend. What, what what does he do at the plate? And 
just the transition from junior college to to that setting is pretty big. And just how did you see him handling everything? Well, I thought he handled it real well. You know, you think about his story. He he left high school early, like Robert did. Um, he went to Wichita State in the spring of his senior year of high school, and then uh, actually went back to Wichita State in the fall. And you know, it was different coaches then recruited him. He just didn't have a good feeling there, and he decided I'm going to go to junior college in the spring. And then he put up monster numbers for about a month there. And then the season ended, and then we got him. So he does have a little bit of experience at the Division One level, uh, being around you know, some environments, um, but that environment, environment down there is different. You know, the level of competition playing for Arkansas and being on the, on the, right on the edge of being in the lineup or DHN. And, uh, I thought he handled himself. Well, he, he attacks for baseball. He goes up there to hit. He'll take a walk every now and then, but he's going to swing it. If it's, if it's near the zone, he's going to take a hack basically is the way what we say. So, uh, we like his approach. Final two questions here, Matt and Phil. Hey, another pitcher we didn't see this weekend was uh, Nate Wolgamuth. Uh, what, what's his status? What, what kind of uh, role do you envision for him? And then without midweek games right now, how tough is it to, to get innings for, for all of these pitchers? Because you got a lot. Yeah. Well, Nate, uh, Nate's right in the mix, but he, he tweaked his back. And uh, we had to hold him out. He threw a bullpen while we were in Arlington. It went well. Um, he's going to throw a little bit today. If it goes good, he might be available the second half of the weekend. So, no, he's got a really good arm. He's got good fastball and a plus, plus, plus changeup. And he can help us right away. So, we'll, we'll get him out there as soon as we, we can. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we'll see. Phil, last question here. Uh, Jalen Battles was really impressive over the weekend. Uh, the ball was jumping off his bat, but then there was a play that he made against TCU, Dave, that I think everybody caught everybody's attention. Went into the hole <clears throat> from deep shortstop, threw a laser to first, and got the guy by a couple of steps. Um, that showed a lot. Uh, I'm, I wonder if you remember that play and what, uh, you know, what, what you think that says about Jalen's ability with that throwing arm. Yeah, he took three or four steps to his right, backhanded the ball, and actually didn't rush it, plant it, and let it go, and threw a strike. And uh, we kind of went wow in the dugout as well. We had seen that a little bit in the fall. Uh, Jalen's one of those guys that uh, he doesn't show you everything in practice as far as, uh, you know, throwing hard every play, and uh, which I kind of like because, you know, you only have so many of those in that arm. and. I've talked to him about that, and uh, but it's in there. He he works hard. He's got a good arm, uh, but he he definitely showed out right there that he can make the play from deep in the hole, and he has a uh, big time shortstop arm there. That was impressive, and yeah, I'll, I'll I'll remember that play for a long time. Thanks, coach.